When unemployment skyrocketed during the pandemic, Workforce Solutions was overwhelmed. They couldn't answer phones, were slow to sign off on claims, and they overpaid thousands of New Mexicans. Then there was the fraud. KRQE News 13 investigative reporter Gabrielle Burkhardt shows you what happens when criminals make it their full-time job to file fake unemployment claims using real information from real people. I didn't know where to start. I had no idea what to do. Mark Maydu is not alone. If someone was trying to get unemployment through the laboratory under my name. It's almost like waiting for your term to be a victim. Mine was the first that came through our organization that we found. Since then, I'll tell you, it has exploded. The chief financial officer for Duke City Urgent Care in Albuquerque learned in April someone used his identity to file a fraudulent unemployment claim. We found Maydu's name along with dozens of others through a public records request with Bernalillo County. A growing stack of victims are learning someone used their private information to collect unemployment money. Local law enforcement is busy taking those reports. I think my identity's been. Oh, no. Victim after victim coming forward to report identity theft cases tied to fake unemployment accounts. On my Hello. name and they have my social and everything. So I think I am compromised. And just to confirm, you've never filed anything with them, correct? Mm -mm. She's employed. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've never filed for unemployment. Some are learning their victims through their mail, receiving letters about benefits they never filed for, or getting surprise debit cards issued from the state. As people are kind of starting to hear more about it, they're, they're more likely to report it. Waylon Proctor is a detective with the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office and part of the U.S. Secret Service Cyber Fraud Task Force, working with the feds to investigate and prosecute unemployment fraud cases. I think everyone and my task force from BCSO, all of us have probably around 40 to 60 cases um, that are actively assigned to us. He says victims of unemployment related identity theft should file police reports, check their bank and credit card accounts, alert the Internal Revenue Service and contact Workforce Solutions to lock the fake claim. We've identified a lot of our fraudulent activity uh, connected to the pandemic unemployment assistance program. Ricky Cerna is the acting secretary for New Mexico's Department of Workforce Solutions, the agency in charge of our state's unemployment insurance program. We double down on the, on the staff that we had available to do fraud detection. And I want to start by saying we, we believe that the pandemic unemployment assistance program was critical. To paint a picture, Cerna says Workforce Solutions received roughly 74,000 phone calls in the month of February 2020, right before the first cases of COVID-19 were confirmed in New Mexico. By April, two months later, the call center was inundated with 3.4 million calls. Businesses were shuttered and more than 100,000 New Mexicans lost their jobs in the pandemic. That it was very difficult to keep up with over such a short period of time. But for people like Maydu, who says he was working more than ever in the healthcare industry, dealing with his fake unemployment claim is an added headache. The other risk, you know, that, that kind of scares me is wherever they got this, are they going to file a false tax return? And then I have all the IRS complications to deal with. Brian Watson is a special agent with the IRS. In my 25 years with the IRS, the amount of fraud relating to scams is unbelievable. If someone gets a 1099 in the mail from the IRS for benefits they didn't file for, Watson says don't ignore it. Some people will say, well, that's just a mistake. I, that's not, I didn't receive those unemployment benefits. I'll just ignore that letter. You're doing that at risking your own financial situation. Meaning it may not stop at unemployment fraud. Criminals often take out lines of credit using stolen identities. Local, state and federal agencies are already overrun with ID theft cases from online phishing schemes. Are they well equipped to deal with this issue in front of us now? I hope so. I mean, I, I, re I really do. And investigators suspect a lot of the stolen info used to file fake unemployment claims belong to victims of those online phishing scams. I'll say at the very least, it's been difficult because um, you talk with somebody that you know is genuinely in need of help and that very next call is someone that's using that same story, right, um, to, to defraud the system. And we've got to hit the reset button with every conversation we have to be sure 
everybody served the right way. Catching the criminals is another challenge. A federal search warrant filed in May shows Homeland Security investigators were tipped off to an unemployment fraud case involving the identities of 65 people. The break in that case came after a UPS driver says he was offered $4,000 to leave two packages at a vacant home, which he refused to do. Turns out the packages had debit cards loaded with unemployment funds. The search warrant shows investigators found a series of Facebook messages from Andrew Shannon exchanging information about counterfeit IDs and stolen Social Security numbers used to obtain fraudulent benefits. I need some COVID money, LOL, one message said. Shannon has not been charged yet for the crime. So what is the success rate for finding and prosecuting criminals behind unemployment fraud? I think that's going to be a number that'll need to be published uh, after, you know, kind of after the book is written on what this pandemic did to unemployment as a system. Unemployment is there for a reason. I think it's important. I would like to see just more controls on the system as a whole. Gabrielle Burkhart, KRQE Investigates. A legislative finance committee report this year says Workforce Solutions may have shelled out more than $100 million toward fraudulent unemployment claims during the pandemic. But the department says it has stopped more than $170 million from going out the door toward bogus claims and says it has stronger protocols in place now.